previously on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series. So here we are in beautiful Solomon Island, Maryland, about to get started. We're looking for a good fast race on some calm water down here. My father can't really understand why I do it. He says to me, why do you do that? Are you mad? There's nothing like coming up to that one wave, the adrenaline rush. It's wild. There is nobody else at this point in time that goes out and consistently wins and wins and wins except Bob, so there, there's nobody else to beat. I mean, we always beat him the first couple of laps, but then, you know, he winds up passing us because we run into these issues with steering and so forth. At the Solomon's Island race, Team Phoenix Parts boat flips while racing against Bob Teague of Amsoil. All we care is that the guys that were on board are okay. That's the main thing. We'll deal with the carnage of the boat afterwards. I could have been a lot worse. Uh, I said to Harry, um, I'm just happy we're both okay. I don't care about the boat. Here we are in Orange Beach, Alabama. You can't get a prettier place on the planet. We love the town down here. It's a, it's a great, great town, great uh, little, little city on the beach. The beaches are fantastic. It's a southern hospitality. Uh, the people are great, the fans are, are awesome. I mean, they line the beach, they're coming up to the boats, we're in the dry pits. I mean, we, you don't have any autographs we signed all day. We're getting kids inside the boat, and it's, it's, it's a great feeling to see they want to interact with us. I love Orange Beach, and it's one of my favorite places to come race. Uh, you know, uh, the people here are so nice. The town is, well, spread out. Sun's out, 84 degrees, the water's up, about five to eight foot seas, which we like. You know, the people are so friendly down here. They're, they're so inviting to us being here. Racing right in front of the white sandy beaches and the condos and the hotels and everything. Everybody around here comes out for this race. The community's really supportive of it. It's really unique here. We're under stress and we're under pressure, and it's, 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 it blows your mind how, how stressed out you can get, just you know, the anticipation. But when you got nice people in a nice environment, and yeah, you know, the food's great, the people are nice, you know, it, it, it helps and you know, it makes it enjoyable to be, to be around. We've been coming here for many years, and it's a great way to end our season at the end of the year as a world uh, championship event. So it's, it's great. We love Orange Beach, yeah, and hope to come back here for many years. Class spring race right here. Left leg, Left leg only. Right? We're going to start you running down the beach. There's two piers that come out into the ocean, okay? At the second pier is the first turn buoy. Should be pretty easy to pick up. The water here in Orange Beach, Alabama has, has been the roughest of the season and we actually enjoy it. presents a, a, a greater challenge. We're in the Gulf and you know, we're used to ones and twos in the Gulf. Um, start here, although we like to give everybody a nice clean start, the start here isn't going to decide this race. It's not all about the top speed of the boat at all. It's more about the amount of punishment that these guys will allow their bodies to take because the guy that will take the bigger pounding can go the fastest. It has nothing to do with the top speed of the boat. So it's a challenge for us. You know, we're used to coming down here and just having flat water run on. It's like the Atlantic Ocean out here this weekend. We, we could do a parade lap. I'm just wondering how many we're gonna lose there. <laughs> The calm water races have their own appeal and their own challenge, but in this, um, you know, you really have to set the boat up right and you have to be on your game to run as, as good as you possibly can. Yeah, it's so rough right now. Before you get to the wave, you want to try and get the boat as straight as possible. Um, of course, you've got to account for the winds. I think yesterday we probably did a five count. So one, two, three, four, five, boom! Every now and again you get the one time you land in the face of the next wave and it shudders the whole boat and I mean it pushes your body down into the seat, your neck concentrating us down into your shoulders and it takes the wind out of you. And 
it hurts. You just wait, 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 wait. And the longer you wait, the more you tense up and just go, oh man, I'm just hoping this isn't gonna hurt too bad. With this, something like how you set the weight up in the boat really matters, your prop selection matters. These conditions are kind of throwback conditions, which we like. Going, going around corners in rough water like, like it is here, um, is uh, it's a, it's a little bit interesting. What I try and do is just you know turn when you're in the water. If you as soon as you land, turn the boat a little bit and then correct it so that it flies flies straight. Cool. You don't want to be going sideways through the air. Not good. A, a good throttle man proves his worth in the rough because it's all about the application of power at the right time. So you've got to put the power on exactly at the right time as you're going over the wave. And then when the boat's jumping, you've got to take the power off so it obviously doesn't over rev. Apply the power, take it off, apply the power, take it off. And it's like a rhythm. You get into a rhythm of the sea because the sea, the sea works in rhythms. The waves will be spanned. We do it by seconds. These spans are about 10 to 12 seconds apart. So you'll have, let's say, a 10-foot wave over here and a 10-foot wave over here. They might be 80, 90 feet apart. If you go slow, the boat will go in and out of these waves and so forth. If you go fast enough and you get on top of it, you can literally skip from wave top to wave top to wave top. It's poetry in motion. It is absolutely the delicate dance of the devil. Because if you do it right, you're the winner. If you do it wrong, you're upside down and possibly in a lot of trouble. But anyway, everybody be safe today. Have a great time. Glad you're all here. See you on the water. We love rough water. Bring it. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series, the most competitive class in the OPA take the stage. Can Team Mighty Max capture a world championship against three of their greatest rivals? We'll find out. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. And by GEICO, 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Optima Batteries the ultimate power source. Over in the dry pits of Orange Beach, Team Mighty Max gears up for their first round of racing for the world championship title. My father he laughed at me. He's like, how the heck did you get involved in that sport? He says, you're not mechanically inclined. It takes a ton of money, and here you are driving one of these things. I said, Dad, I guess it's true. If you want to do something bad enough, you'll find a way to do it. Mark and I have been racing together for about six years. I'm a throttleman and the owner of the boat. One of the unique things about offshore powerboat racing is it does take two people to control a boat, uh, particularly in the ocean races where uh, on Eddie's side of the boat, the throttles, the trim tabs, and the actually trim of the outdriver, his responsibilities. Uh, my role on the other side of the boat, believe it or not, is just to actually steer the boat, which is to, to steer into the waves and also, uh, you know, hopefully take better lines around the course and pass competitors. Eddie and I are, are kind of different personalities. He's kind of super intense, maybe a little bit stressed out, and maybe I would consider myself a little bit more the calming influence in the boat. We get stressed out in the situation in the race, and I'll just say, hey man, we're all right. You know, we messed up on that turn, but we got you know four more laps to catch the boat in front of us, and we can do it. Going into first, turn one, and, and most every race, our boat turns really well. Mark and I work well together. We're always trying to get that inside lane. Always. And in offshore racing, one of the biggest challenges is actually just to finish because the equipment takes such a beating. A lot of boats don't finish, so yeah, that's primarily is, is keeping the boat together. Uh, a lot of time and work goes into it uh, between races to, to kind of perceive things that, that could go wrong. Mark has no mechanical ability. He knows it, so we don't have a problem there. I take care of everything. Uh, well, as far as electrical short, we haven't figured it out yet, but I've been just changing everything I have time to do. So hopefully we'll pick it up in the process and it'll be eliminated. 
Because when the boat's coming in and out of the water, he has to be on and off the throttle. And if you've watched a race before, you've seen some boats seem to be kind of skipping from wave to wave and hooked up. It's because as the boat's coming out of the water, he's off the throttle. As the boat's landing in the water, he's on it, giving it forward momentum. It's so rough out there to go out there and test. The, the race will be our test, I guess. I equate it to putting your, put in your car in neutral, rev, put your foot on the floor, and dropping it in drive. If you don't back off the throttle in time, that's what you're doing to the drive when it hits back in the water. You can get into a rhythm usually on that straightaway, but by the time you make the next turn, it's an entirely different course. And by the time you get around back to the same place, all the wave sets are all different than they were the last lap. You just have to keep up with it. We have, we're primarily a rough water boat and rough, rough water team. Mark and I do really well. All the ocean rough water races, we expect to win. Um, you know, we each have our own responsibilities in the boat. It takes a tremendous amount of trust to work together and to run as competitive as we do. And, you know, we've done it for a number of years together, so we have the utmost confidence in each other. Race one, class five. Three boats pull out under the racetrack for their chance at podium glory. Team Mighty Max, Team Typhoon, and Team Daredevil. As the green flag flies, the boats scream across the water with hopes of taking a lead. Mighty Max takes the early lead, followed by Daredevil in second and Typhoon in third. Typhoon moves into second, inching their way closer to the leader. Typhoon takes the inside line and moves into first. Mighty Max powers back and inches back up front. Meanwhile, Daredevil creeps back into contention. Typhoon moves back in front with Mighty Max hot on their trail. Typhoon takes the win, followed by Mighty Max in second and Daredevil in third. For Randy Shoeless of Team Typhoon, an early celebration begins out on the waters of Orange Beach. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. My name is Jim Anselmo, uh, throttleman of the Bull and the Beach Offshore Race Team. I um, actually grew up on the bay, on Chesapeake Bay, Maryland, and been boating most of my life. Um, I started off with my first boat and had a partner that came in, which means he more or less paid for a seat in the boat. And that lasted uh, two races, and he said he couldn't do it. Couldn't handle the, the speed and the rush and, and being out in the ocean. Um, so my brother uh, actually stepped in and started driving the boat with me. I throttle from one side, he drives from the other side of the boat. And, uh, and yeah, being brothers, we click. We don't communicate a lot in the boat, even though we have an intercom system. Um, and we just, we know what each other needs to do. He takes care of getting the boat where it needs to get. And on my side, I'm working the throttles and the trim of the angle of the boat. He's the uh, throttle man. Uh, I'm the driver. It's always been that way. I've never throttled the boat. I don't think I could. 
uh, too much concentration than I'm doing. He thinks I'm just a monkey over there staring at the boat, but I think my, my position is a little more important than his, as he can't see, he's like a bat, he can't even see the turns coming up, so it's a good thing I have the wheel so I can turn when I need to turn. About 15 years ago, we took our pleasure boat, um, went to a local race and picked up a local sponsor, uh, Phil Halk, who owned at the time Bull on the Beach in Ocean City, Maryland. My brother and I have been racing uh, offshore boats for about 15 years now. And uh, we've been with Bull on the Beach for about that long. He's been a great supporter of us and, uh, and of the sport all together. And, uh, I hope we can continue to go for a few more years. I think I still have it in me that I can keep up. <laughs> So one last inspection, we're going for rough water today. We're checking any loose wires or hoses, plumbing, uh, double checking our belts. Um, once we're out there, it's, it's all the preparation work is it hopefully pays off and you're, you're good to go. Um, there's a lot of, a lot of components that, that take a beating out here. Um, whether it's the salt water for electronics or the engine mounts, headers, so you know, a good final inspection is what assures us uh, hopefully a good win at the end of the day. Yeah, our, our rival and, and good friend is, uh, is TKO, um, V-Bottom with big blower motors. But he runs that same bracket that we do, that, that class three class. And uh, we've been racing him all year, battling back and forth. He, uh, he lost the motor in Michigan, got it together and made it down here for the Orange Beach uh, World Championship. And this is his water. So we are gunning for him tomorrow morning. Race 2, Class 3. Three boats head out to the waters of Orange Beach for a shot at victory. Cleveland Construction, TKO, Edville on the Beach. As the green flag flies, three boats go neck and neck toward the first turn. TKO takes the lead, followed by Bull on the Beach in second, and Cleveland Construction in third. takes the inside line and challenges TKO for the lead. TKO moves ahead, distancing themselves from second. Checkered flag, TKO grabs the win. Followed by Bull on the Beach in second and Cleveland Construction in third. Next on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series, the Super V lights invade the waters of Orange Beach. Do Typhoon and Buccaneer have what it takes to stay out in front? Or does Time Bandit have other plans? We'll find out. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. The 
Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics, and by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. Before class one and the extreme class take to the race course, another class of boats, Super V lights, ready themselves for the rugged waters of Alabama. Uh, I think the favorite part for me is the challenge of making sure we got the right setup every weekend. And since I do all my own work and mechanic work on the boats, along with pirate racing, we uh, the challenge of making sure we do the right things to get us there. And then if we are fortunate enough to get a win that weekend, then it makes it all really sweet. As you can very well see on the flags, it's extremely rough. We've changed our total setup on the boat for this race. We've gone to a completely different drive program for this one. We've added weight to the boat. We've changed a lot of our normal stuff for this race. It's nice to, especially when Travis and I or Jeff, like this weekend and I are all together and we're all working hard to overcome a lot of obstacles during the weekend because of testing or problems with the boat and then we succeed in getting that done and then pull out a win on top of that makes it even more sweeter at the end of the day. These boats are, they can withstand a lot, but uh, we're asking them to do an awful lot for this race. This is gonna be tough. It's gonna be hard on them. <laughs> Very hard. Race three, Super V Light. Five boats glide out under the track to battle against the choppy waters of Orange Beach. As the green flag flies, Typhoon and Buccaneer battle toward the first turn. Time Bandit continues charging back in third. Buccaneer and Typhoon continue battling through the fourth turn. Buccaneer takes the lead. Typhoon begins to fade into second. Time Bandit continues moving ahead in third. An engine malfunction forces Typhoon out of the race, as well as pirate racing. Back up front, Buccaneer continues leading the race, but Time Bandit is gaining ground in second. Time Bandit takes the lead. At the checkered flag, Time Bandit grabs the win, followed by Buccaneer in second, and Pirate Racing takes third. Next, on the Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series, Team Amsoil takes to the waters of Orange Beach. Does Bob Teague have what it takes to win the weekend? Or do Geico and Lightning Jacks have other plans? The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. Okay, you ready? Right, uh, right there.
Over in the dry pits of Orange Beach, Bob Teague and Team Amsoil gear up for a very unique race weekend. I have so much respect for Bob as a throttleman. You know, I got little kids and stuff, and my whole feeling about boat racing had changed a little bit um, since, since they were born. I just wasn't gonna jump in with somebody that was just some wild man, you know. Well, that's uh, still a half. It's still, it's, it's still a quarter. Do it again. One more. clicked right away except for me having major brain meltdown. I'd been throttling all my career and the throttleman never counts laps. It's always the driver, you know, because he's got less to do with his hands so he's got to pull his little pieces of tape over there. Four laps, four pieces of tape. Four pieces of tape, four laps. I didn't count laps properly and I told him to pull in early from the lead. What a, what a sinking feeling. I just wanted, I was gutted. Go through, start, finish, pull tape. Go through, start, finish, pull tape. Go through, start, finish, pull tape. So after that, I haven't made that mistake again. Solid. I can handle it. We take our racing seriously. And um, we don't come to races to party. Uh, we come to races to win. And so here we are, um, certainly um, representing Amsoil and, um, and OPA and our love for offshore racing. And uh, we have an obligation to put on a good show. And um, because we have our fans, they expect us to be here. What I've learned about Bob is that, uh, you know, he's a, he's a fighter um, from start to end. And so the challenge for us this weekend in these water conditions um, is to get the overall win. Well, there's, there's always a race within a race. Certainly you have the race of your class and then, you know, it'd be cool if we could like win this thing overall. Let me tell you what, there's gonna be some boats out there to race. And especially if the conditions uh, get nasty there's a couple boats here, they have a lot more power than we do. Uh, one's uh, Lightning Jacks with the uh, supercharged uh, engines in a, in a 36 skater. Uh, there's uh, the Caveman boat with 2200 horsepower and a V-bottom skater. Um, you know, we're gonna take those guys on. So what's the strategy? You know the, Nail it, hold it down. You know the, you know the Caveman's gonna be gunning. They're Nail gonna, it. Hold it down. Rough water team tends to be the equalizer. You know, if, you've, if it's flat water and you've got 500 horsepower more than the next guy, you're probably gonna leave him in the dust. Um, when it's rough water, it's a lot less, you know, horsepower is a lot less important. It's balance, setup, skill. Brand new props, never been in the water, because uh, uh, this year we just haven't had conditions that would warrant a, pro warrant a prop this small. There's really only so fast you can go in any boat in a certain condition. And while some of the boats are capable of 150 miles an hour, in ideal conditions, with their highest gear setup, that's not gonna happen here. What's gonna happen here is people are gonna be learning how to set up their boat for rough water conditions, weight placement, gear ratios, propellers, everything else and then figuring out how to get the, the boat up on top of those conditions and run across them. That's what we're gonna be dealing with here. It's not unique. That's the way we always run, flat out. As hard as the boat will go, because that's the only thing we know. And that's what they have to do, that's what we have to do, and that means that you have to hit the turns just right and hope that it holds on. And uh, the turns are so sharp sometimes and, and, and have so much G-force that you think you're gonna black out. Oh, I better tighten these belts. Here we go. We're gonna run our race. Don't break any more studs. <laughs> oh, sure, I'm gonna stop halfway and come out and check them, okay? The water's uh, deceiving here. It's rougher than it looks from the beach. And there's some serious holes out there and uh, you can start feeling a pattern. Um, 
then the next thing that happens is you get punished. So yes, it's an equalizer. You're gonna, it kind of brings everybody into the same ballpark. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. There's always a risk with everybody, whether you're experienced or not. Um, the one big thing that I, I always have is respect for the water. Mother Nature, she is, she's a tough cookie, and if you don't respect her, she will bite you and bite you hard. You're never at one with the ocean, because just as you've gone in the rhythm, you've got to turn, and then the whole thing's different. Uh, so I believe sometimes the new racers that come in, they don't really have that respect to know what can happen if they do make a mistake. Or, or push it too hard, they get excited. But this is the whole thing about power racing, is that every minute is different because the sea changes, the sea is unpredictable. I mean, you know, the sea is the most dangerous thing, water and, and the sea, it's powerful, it's got so much power. But you take that for granted and it's gonna eat you. One of the reasons why I came and raced in the US this time uh, with Geico is because what they, what the team AMF plan to do and what they're trying to do. Uh, so I hope that in five years from now um, that, that it does become that, that you'll get 15, 20 boats all the same, all very similar, getting out there and having proper racing and it be televised and, and it becomes, you know, a professional sport. And it be televised and, and it becomes, you know, a professional sport. Returning to Orange Beach is Geico's biggest adversary. Team Lightning Jacks. When you're going racing, you want to make sure that your equipment is going to stay together. You're not worried about listening for a hiccup or watching the gauges to see if something is overheating or fluctuating in, pre in, in pressure. You, know, you can really just concentrate on getting down the lane and, and getting the job done. We, we enjoy doing what we do. Some people ask me, you know, don't you get nervous before, just before the race? No, we don't because it's what we do. We're trying to control something that's completely out of control. You know, I mean, it's just, you're taking this raw machine and trying to make a turn at a, you know, 115 miles an hour, which you can't even do in a car and stick to the ground. We just have to, uh, to you know, take every wave, one wave at a time and uh, one leg of the course at a time. We're undefeated. The boat ran phenomenal all season. This year has been one of the greatest years for me for offshore racing. Race four, class one. Two boats line up for their shot at victory. Lightning Jacks and Geico Caveman. A third competitor, Amsoil, prepares to race against the two higher horsepower boats for bragging rights here at Orange Beach. flag flies, the Amsoil boat takes the early lead, with Geico and Lightning Jacks battling for second. Geico moves into second, with Lightning Jacks trailing in third. in on Amsoil. Geico moves ahead.
Chemsoil refuses to give up. closer and closer to the race leader. The two boats race neck and neck around turn four. Lightning Jax pours it on and closes the gap on second place Geico. moves past Geico into second. checkered flag flies, Amsoil takes the win, followed by Lightning Jacks in second and Geico Caveman in third. Even though Amsoil's victory won't count as a win in class one against Geico and Lightning Jacks, the Super Cat Light does bring home the bragging rights as the boat to beat on Orange Beach. Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics. The Amsoil Offshore Powerboat Racing Series is brought to you by Amsoil, the first in synthetics, and by Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. And by Optima Batteries, the ultimate power source. As the racing in Orange Beach comes to an end, the teams prepare to celebrate their victories. During the two-day event, the scores from both races are tallied up and a series of new world champions are crowned. And we were just slamming and banging, and, and I told Sean, I says, you know, look, I says, let's not break the boat in half. We did it last year, and, and uh, it's too costly to fix, so we just went on out and did a ride to support OPA. Oh, 
was brutal out there. Uh, Friday was rough. Today felt even rougher at the bottom two turns coming out of it. Come around Christmas time, uh, you know, you kind of chill out a little bit, you know, and January rolls around, it's still cold, and then when February comes around, you start getting, you know, antsy again. Once it gets you in your blood, it never leaves, man. You're going to be hooked on this sport, believe me. This year we're the national championship, and the guys we always hang with, TKO, we figure maybe we'll let them win this race. So they won this year. We didn't really let them, but we let them think that anyway. They got a great sponsor this year. Well, this is really a great season for Eddie and I. Um, every race we finished on the podium, either first, second, or third. Our goal was to win a national points championship, which we did. Oh, it was very difficult. Uh, we is thought that the we. World champion? <laughs> yes, it is. is this the world Would you like to meet me? Five? Yes, it is. Thank you. <laughs> Randy Sluice. For you people out there, I have no idea. This guy's deserved it. He's earned it. He's worked on it. It's been a busy season. Uh, we've had some challenging waters. The competition has been great. The, the Geico Caveman Boat has been has been on the top of their game. The Geico V Bottom Caveman Boat, they, they pulled ahead of us a little bit. We are right there off the tail. Um, and then uh, and then we took the victory home. We took the world champions. We had, we we had a flawless season this year. It was it was it was excellent. I just want to say to all the St. Tour Americans that this has been a great season for us. So it doesn't sit right with me when we don't win. But, um, you know, I, I couldn't ask for anything more. The team is a family. To be frank with you, it's, it's a little unfortunate that it's all come together at the end of the season. And, uh, you know, one of the greatest parts of this season has been going past Bob Teague today. And Bob, you know, I was watching a video the other day about you and uh, this guy here said anyone who gets past Bob Teague deserves to get past Bob Teague and deserves a medal. And uh, we did do that today. And so, Bob, you know, lick my ass. Bye. Uh, water was rough and we nailed the setup and we took off and uh, we had the entire field covered. We won uh, the uh, national championship in our class, uh, Super Cat Light. We also won uh, the overall championship. We achieved more points in our class than any boat did in any class. Now this year, OPA season went, went very well. It started out with a bang. We had a few turbine boats and, and the Cintron boat, they're all gung-ho ready to go. but. Through injury, through burning up of boats, and through various reasons, we pretty much are the only big boat that ran the whole season. Uh, we're always looking forward to next season. We just signed a new three-year deal with Geico, and uh, we love them as a sponsor. They're, they're, they're probably the most awesome company to deal with. I've been racing for 12 years, and I have never raced in rougher water in my life. We went from the worst water we ever raced in to the calmest water we raced in. So whenever you can run the gamut, still be successful, so have your boat together and everybody's healthy, it's a good year. Right here, this is Tammy, and she's winning her own battle. We give her all a big round of applause, and uh, we'll be back next year, thank you. If it wasn't for all the racers and all the great volunteer organizations at each race site, we wouldn't do it. We got through it, we'll do it again next year. So, that's the end of 2011. Yeah. <laughs>